Hello indie game fans, the classic Zelda style action adventure game has been the domain of indie developers for a number of years ever since Nintendo decided to take it in a 3D and open world direction and with some excellent examples of games that released this year including Eastward and Death's Door, this genre is well and truly alive and thriving. So here's a look at the top 20 best upcoming games in the genre that I'm very excited about. Let's begin with Hashtag Blood a fantastically animated entry that has been a very long time coming. This got on my radar a couple of years ago due to its look, resembling a cartoon that would not be out of place on Cartoon Network, but you play as a young vampire hunter in high school, having to fight and battle her way through enemies when something mysterious and evil sweeps through the town. I don't know how far along this game is, but they did release this new trailer in July this year, showing signs of life, so hopefully we will get to play soon. A new title that has never been shown off on the channel before is Sea Ring, another gorgeous pixel art title that is quite an interesting twist. You play as the princess of the sea, having to venture across the desert in a world ruled by fire in order to retrieve her mother's lost crown and to restore peace to the world. Mechanically, this looks to flip tradition on its head, where the only way to attack is by using the sea ring to defend, significantly changing the flow of combat, making this of interest. If you've been following along on the channel, I'm sure that you'll be familiar with Elementalist, a game where I covered the Kickstarter campaign and I'm pretty excited about. It has you wielding elemental powers as you adventure through the land, used in solving puzzles, accessing new areas or even combo together in combat to great effect. You can create a pool of water and then use lightning to shock enemies, or to freeze enemies in place using ice and then follow up with the heavy hitting but slow earth attack. And with a total of 8 elements, this should be pretty interesting. It is supposed to be non-linear as well, so you can explore the dungeons in any order that you choose, which, in addition to the elemental slant and the gorgeous look, definitely makes this of interest. According to their Kickstarter campaign, this should launch in Q2 next year, but you know how things are with games in development and it could get delayed, but whenever this releases, it should be worth a play. A title with a very interesting colour palette is Lilia's Sky Arc, coming to us from developer Monolith of Minds, best known for the action-adventure title Resolution with Two Eyes, which released in 2020, which people have compared to Hyperlight Drifter. I believe this game will have similar comparisons being made, so hopefully they would have done enough to differentiate themselves where you're defending your home against an armada of enemy airships with a great in-universe trailer, so I'll leave you to them. Jumped out of bed and booted up the doctor. Then I went outside, said hi to the crew, and cuddled the sheep. So soft! Usually, I venture out into the forest, tease the bees and the dinos, and explore the caves for some magic. But yesterday, Yesterday the spirits were restless. The monkey told me that something wicked had landed. We were under attack. So, I grabbed my alchemy and some rocks and beat the crap out of those pink soldiers. I chased them down, went up to their airships and told the boss to bite it. <laughs> that was fun. Quite exhausting. I went back to the farm 
and dropped flat on my pillow. A procedurally generated pixel art title that has already gone through multiple changes in development is Mystica. Changing its look from ultra minimalist to one with an actual character design while its Kickstarter campaign was still ongoing, and with its latest trailer, thus appear that the look of our hero has changed once again. However, this is very Zelda-like down to a T, even having the spinning sword attack, but looks to have replayability due to the procedural generation of the world, but is not a roguelite since I believe generation is done at the start of every game, looking also classic and of interest. I came across a star of Chrome while looking for new action-adventure games and I knew I had to share. Since this is another very classically Zelda style entry, but does have a unique setting. It appears that you're playing as some sort of sheriff or cowboy character, but is set most interestingly on the Martian frontier. You are both searching for your lost dog, as well as the reason behind this never-ending day, looking to both pay tribute to games of the past, while simultaneously doing their own thing. I like the gameplay variety shown off, where you have both a gun and a sword, but do have weapons like dynamite as well. The puzzles look neat, even having side-scrolling platforming sections like Zelda 2, which does indicate to me that the developers of this game are fans of Zelda, and I cannot wait to see how the final game turns out. For something a little bit different, Super Dungeon Maker is essentially Zelda Maker in all but name, following in the footsteps of make-your-own level games like Mario Maker, only this time you play as a sword-wielding chicken delving into dungeons. I love the pixel art look, but the Zelda dungeon does seem more mechanically complex than a Mario level, so I do wonder how this will turn out. I've had my eye on Vessels of Decay for quite a while since I quite liked the pixel art but was waiting for a trailer to show it off and now that it is here, I have no reason not to give it a mention. This has you fighting away through a post-apocalyptic Scandinavia but it was not caused by nuclear weapons but rather something known as Decay, resulting in horrible mutant creatures lurking about in what is otherwise quite pleasant green environments. There isn't much more to the story setup, but it looks cool as heck, so of course it got my attention. While well, I did try to largely keep to 2022 releases in this video, there are some games a little further out that are too good not to mention, one of which is Shrine's Legacy, one that looks to pay tribute to the best from the SNES era and looks to be doing so based on trailer footage alone. Needless to say, the pixel art is fantastic, although like Elementalist mentioned above, it's based around the concept of 8 elements to harness to be used in combat, puzzles and exploration. 
However, one of the most interesting parts is that this has co-op support in addition to a fully playable single player mode, looking to be fun with friends, and however you choose to play, certainly looks like one of the more promising entries. I did mention Totemic in last year's video, where it was originally slated for 2021, but does appear that this got pushed to 2022. But this very blue pixel art action adventure game sure looks impressive. Our main character wields an enchanted axe that can absorb the powers of her enemies in what looks to be challenging, fast paced combat. Not much else is available on this game, so that will have to do it for now, but certainly one to watch. Let's kick off the top 10 with another long, long in development title in Radio the Universe. One that I hoped would be a 2021 release, but it appears that things have changed once again. This was kickstarted way back in 2013, so it's coming up to 9 years, so spare a moment to think of the backers who must have been waiting for so long. I got my hopes up when a Steam page for this game was made, with a release window of winter, but with no year specified, and the latest is that this has now been changed to making some improvements TBA. So again, no idea when this would release, which is why it is not further up on the list. I was pretty impressed with the look of Zell when I first came across it, since this is a 3D action adventure game with a sci fi twist, having some good looking environments and animations, which makes it a no brainer pick. This trailer does throw off some cinematic camera angles that makes it look more like a third person action game, but I believe the bulk of this game will be from the classic top down camera angle, where you play as an amnesiac protagonist who crash lands in a strange place. The game's description talks about bending time and space, which could be interesting for the exploration and combat, where sci-fi entries in this genre are pretty difficult to come by, making this one to watch. Let's hope this will finally get us out of this junkyard. And bam! Hmm. Come on. There's nothing to turn around. What the? I always wanted to be your loyal servant. But I was blinded by faith. I believed that you would protect me. But you took everything from me. So take my faith back. Another title that I've covered many, many times is There Is No Light, a dark fantasy entry that has you delving into the underground world, hunting down members of the Church of the Hand in order to save your child. The pixel art is one of the best that I have seen, where this has impressed in demos so far, and is again another title initially slated for this year but got delayed, so I'm fairly certain 2022 will be the year. I reject your Surprise! Another very long in development Zelda style game did show signs of life and will be the first time that I'm covering Spindle on this channel. I came to know of this game through one of the many cameo appearances of this character, where apparently development on this game started 5 years ago but they did launch a Kickstarter campaign this year which was successfully funded. You play as Death, 
it was a little pink for a pet for some reason, taking place in a world where nobody dies anymore, which has led to absolute chaos, and death has to step in. The pixel art, while simple, is very effective, so I cannot wait to learn more about the world and upgrades. We have a new trailer for No Place for Bravery, a brutal low fantasy entry where you play as a grizzled old warrior slashing his way through the world in order to find his missing daughter. This has been shown a number of times on the channel where I am very impressed by the pixel art with this new trailer showing off even more of the enemies and environments. Weirdly enough, it does give me a little bit of a hyper light drifter vibe but it's very different in theme and do be warned, this is a pretty bloody and gory entry. It still has a 2021 release window on the Steam store page but with just 20 days left in the year, I don't think that it will make it out but it looks like a fantastic entry for next year if it does come out. One of the things that I absolutely love about Scrap Tackle is the vibe of this game, being, in one word, whimsical. The art and animation does remind me of Flash games but in a good way, where you play as a novice wizard exploring the world. This is a non-linear entry, which means that you can explore in different directions with the expected combat, quest objectives, boss fights and secrets. One interesting aspect mentioned by the developer is that dialogue is completely optional in this game where you can even walk away mid-conversation so I do wonder how this will affect the progression. It was successfully kickstarted in April this year with a planned summer 2022 release but it does seem like quite a tight window so I'm not sure if it would make it but if it does, it will certainly be one to watch since everything from the animations and character designs simply screams fun to me. We did get a new trailer for Nobody Saves the World as well, the next title from developer Drinkbox Studios, who are best known for the Guacamelee series of Metroidvania games. The main gimmick here is that the featureless person named Nobody, who, upon finding a magic wand, gains the ability to transform into a variety of other forms, mixing and matching their abilities to be used in combat and exploration. It appears that the overworld map is handcrafted, but individual dungeons do evolve in complexity and danger depending on your progress, but it does have no XP or grinding for levels, and even individual quest lines for the different forms. A little bird told me that this was releasing early in 2022, perhaps much earlier than you might think, so perhaps we will all get to play very soon. I was also very pleasantly surprised to learn about the existence of Blossom Tales 2 The Minotaur Prince, the sequel to one of the best Zelda style indie games in recent memory, but the sequel looks to be more of the same, but I'm not complaining since it does look fantastic.
It uses the same setup of a grandfather telling a story to his grandchildren, this time set hundreds of years after the events of the first game. While nothing too crazy has been done to the visuals and combat, this just looks like another solid entry which I hope can surpass the original. And of course, Tunic has to be on a list like this, where hopefully, this will be the last that you are seeing of this game on the list of upcoming games since we didn't get a release date confirmed during the Game Awards this past Thursday. Yes, this long in development title, announced in 2017, will be released in March next year, where Zelda Like a Fox has impressed in demos and previews so far. There isn't much on the story setup, where the fox awakens stranded on a mysterious beach, having to explore the island and fight hostile enemies in the process. This new trailer shows off even more environments and enemies, although the bulk of this looks fairly similar to earlier versions, but for how long we have all been waiting for this, it gets a great spot on the list. Me being me, of course I absolutely love the pixel art of Hunt the Night, a grim dark gothic horror action adventure game that I am very excited about. This is another Kickstarter project, getting funded in 2019, which I believe I covered way back when, and did undergo a significant visual upgrade if you go back to view the original trailer on the campaign page. You play as a member of an order known as the Stalkers, having to prevent the Knight from getting a foothold in this world by hunting down these powerful monsters. It certainly gives me some Bloodborne vibes, but with even more of a mythical aspect since our heroine is able to tap into the dark powers of the Knight in order to fight fire with fire. The variety in character customization, weapon options and equipment looks impressive, or to be used in challenging combat with some awesome boss designs shown off in this trailer. According to the team's latest Kickstarter update in November, they have a targeted release window of second half of 2022, so if it makes it out next year, could potentially be Game of the Year material, taking the number one spot. For more Zelda-style or pixel art games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.